Hi everyone, I'm Jody. Welcome to Krenner Art Museum Yoga in my living room. So welcome to my home. Um, really grateful that we can continue our practice together despite the fact that we're not physically together. Um, really grateful for Krenner Art Museum to allow for our continued practice on Fridays at noon. So please join us then. Each week I'll be back with hopefully something new and different, hopefully something that you can turn to in your time of need. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. You are welcome to have some props. We don't use a lot of props in the studio or rather at the museum, um, but you're at home. So maybe you've got a scarf, maybe you've got a yoga strap. You can use a couple of blocks. So if you don't have blocks, you can always use books. So not necessary to have these. You can also use a chair. So just some props to have. It's nice to have maybe a blanket for a Shavasana or even for our seated poses. You can have a, any kind of a blanket will work. This is just a standard Mexican blanket. Maybe a pillow if you don't have a bolster. This is a bolster, but you can use a pillow off of your bed. We're not necessarily going to use these props, but they can be nice um, in addition to your practice. So we're gonna start standing. We're gonna do what's called the breath of joy. I know we've done this in class before. So standing with feet about hip distance apart. And I'll just show you what this looks like and then we'll just join in together. So a mountain pose, nice tall spine, connecting to the breath. Again, just watching for a moment. So I'm finishing my exhalation and preparing for a deep inhalation. As I inhale, I sweep my arms up, maybe my gaze goes up. And then as I exhale, arms sweep down and I give that really beautiful out breath with an open mouth, maybe even tightening the throat, almost like an ujjayi victory breath. So we're gonna come into that together. Standing in your mountain pose, finishing an exhalation. Inhale, sweep the arms up, breathe deeply in through the nose, out through the mouth. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale and exhale. Coming back through standing. A little bit of movement from side to side. So just letting the arms relax, maybe even lightly tapping the sides of your body as you move from side to side, you move slowly. Sometimes I like to bend my knees and maybe angle out on my toes, um, pivoting on the heels. And this can be a real Nice release for the knee joint, so you're not locking knees. Just finding some fluidity in the body. I noticed that I'm doing a lot more sitting, and so this kind of movement, building a little bit of heat, getting rid of that stagnant energy can be really beautiful. As you can see, my kitty cat will be joining us. His name is Phoenix. He's about six, six months old. I adopted him. All right. Kind of slowing down that movement, noticing the energy in the body, feet again about hip distance, arms alongside. We'll move through some sun salutations. We'll move in half sun salutations to start. So connecting to the breath, finishing an exhalation. Use your next inhalation to float the arms up without effort and exhale swan dive. Using core strength, soften through knees. A deep inhalation, that same core lengthening through the spine, and then exhale to fold forward. You can soften knees again. Inhale, rising, sweeping arms out and up, fingertips reach skyward, and then exhale, folding forward. Deep inhalation, lifting halfway, hands to shins or thighs. Exhale, folding. Inhale, rising, using all that strength, and exhale. Inhale, monkey, halfway lift. Exhale, folding. Inhale, sweeping up. And come through that just a couple more times on your own. Maybe closing the eyes. Think about this as a moving meditation.
time. Connecting to the breath. It's a breath guided movement. And this last time, arms reach up, palms touch. Maybe the gaze lifts and then exhale, hands through heart center, pausing here. Reconnect to the breath. Begin to play with a little bit of balance. You can keep the palms together. Begin to shift the weight into the left foot. Spread the left toes, broaden through the sole of that foot. Begin to prop the right heel against the inner ankle. Pause there. You can stay here or you can start to float the foot up, either below the knee or above the knee. So you can see what's available to you. You can keep the palms pressing together. So really creating that midline strength or maybe the arms float, maybe the gaze lift. If you're feeling really good, you can close the eyes and make this a balance game. And the root of balance, as I always remind people, is to dance. So noticing that own, your own dance and your own practice today. Just one more breath. And hands back to heart center. Draw the knee out in front of you. And then slowly releasing that foot back down to the earth. Maybe shaking it out a little bit. Notice all that energy, that aliveness in that left foot. You can roll through that ankle. Back through center, back through mountain pose. Shifting the weight to the right. Spread the toes, broaden that foot. Hands to the heart. Propping the heel against the inner ankle. Pause here. Just finding your drishti, your gazing point for your eyes. Something that doesn't move at eye level or above. Foot to the lower shin or above the knee. Pressing everything into the midline. Notice if that right hip is hipping out. Mine just was. Stay here or maybe finding another mudra. Maybe one arm down, one arm up. Finding a wisdom mudra. The pointer finger and the thumb can touch. And gaze can change. So this is your own dance. Let this be your own practice. But mindful. Purposeful. One more breath. Hands back to the heart. The knee back in front of you, and then releasing the foot. Let the feet go wide. So you can change your position if you're on the mat. Mine is lengthwise here, so you can change that, making sure that you can still see the camera. Hands to the hips. If you know you have tightness in the hamstrings or the adductors, maybe you want to bring those two blocks out in front of you or the books or the chair. So feet wide, arms elbows reaching behind you. Think about really opening up through the chest. You can feel that as you squeeze the shoulder blades along the spine and the back body. Core is active to create that uplifted energy in the spine. Inhale here. Keeping all of that length in the spine as you exhale, see if you can hinge at your hips. You can even feel the hip action. Finding your blocks or finding the earth. Keeping the spine more parallel to the earth. The gaze down. So very unlike my head, which is looking, my gaze is looking towards the camera, just so you can hear me, but gazing down. And so from here, again, just making sure if you've got the blocks, maybe walking them down, maybe you don't even need the blocks. I'm gonna move through a little cat-cow action. So inhale, lift the gaze, lift the tailbone, open the heart. Exhale, rounding the spine. And then inhale once again, finding that length here, opening in the chest, and exhale, rounding. And just a couple more breaths on your own. Shoulders away from ears, exhale, rounding. Chin more towards chest. One more cycle of breath. Back to that nice long neutral spine. Again, palms to the earth or to blocks. So you can heel to toe the feet closer together or just hopping closer together. So my toes and my heels, or my toes are angling out, my heels are angling in, and you're in a squatted position. The heels can be lifted. You bring the backs of the hands to the earth, rounding forward, bowing forward. One more breath. Kitty's always the center of attention here. 
palms to the earth, start to walk your hands out, start to release your knees to the earth, coming into a tabletop position. Playing with a little bit more balance, some core strength as well. So I'm gonna walk my body, my hands more towards the top of the mat. I'm gonna let my left palm ground. Now again, I'm spreading through the fingers and I'm extending my right leg out. Pinky toe edge of the foot is in line with the back of the mat. Hand, right hand to the hip. You can keep the gaze neutral, so in front of you. Or maybe as you reach fingertips skyward, maybe the gaze is skyward. There's so many ways we can play with this side plank. So if you're feeling really good and you want to, you're energized and you want to extend both legs, maybe you're coming into the full Vashistasana, so you can do that. You can release that shin back down, you can float the right foot away. So any any kind of variation here. Just a couple more breaths here. And then starting to release everything back down to the earth. Coming to tabletop for just a moment. You can flow through a cat cow. Inhale, lift the gaze, lift the tailbone. Exhale, rounding, pressing the mat away. back through neutral, back through that nice long neutral spine. I'm just gonna shift my perspective just so I can stay facing the camera so you don't get that rear view. And again, you can walk more towards the top of the mat. Make sure you've got plenty of room on the mat. Right palm grounds, left leg extends. I want that foot on the mat for stability, for using that stickiness quality of the mat. Hand to the hip and allow the body to orient. Think about your mountain pose energy so that line of energy from the tailbone all the way through the crown of the head. Again, you can touch the shoulder and from there the arm extends. That way we're not pinching any of the musculature in the back body. Maybe the gaze is skyward, maybe it's not. So your choice, depending on how the neck feels today, you can play with this variation. Again, maybe coming into that full plank or side plank rather. It's like you were in mountain pose and you simply fell over. Or again, you can release the shin, maybe lift that outer leg, really activate that outer glute. Breathe. One more breath. And slowly release the gaze, release the palm. Inhale, lifting the gaze, lift the tailbone. And as you exhale, unround your spine. Inner big toes come together to touch. Sinking the hips back to the heels, back into a child's pose. You can create a pillow, maybe for the forehead with both hands. Or forehead can come to the earth. So child's pose here. Letting the breath settle. A deeper breath. And take one more breath. And drawing the palms under the shoulders, come up to your tabletop once again. So from here, we're working into the forearms and the wrists. So you can start to walk the fingers or the hands so that the fingers angle towards the side walls. Soften the elbows, maybe circle a little bit. So again, lots of time, maybe too much time on our computers. So helping out our forearms, our wrists, you can circle in the opposite direction. Like carpal, carpal tunnel prevention 101 here. Maybe you stay here, this, is good. this could be beautiful. Or you can angle the fingers towards the corners of your mat, soften the elbows, maybe circling. Staying here or maybe angling the fingers so they face the knees. And again, elbows soft and circle a little bit. Don't do anything if it hurts. This might be too much. I'm definitely right at my edge today. Like I said, I've been spending too much time on the computer as well. We all have. So finding stillness and then start to slowly and incrementally walk the hands so the fingers face forward once again. Coming into puppy pose. So I like to have my knees a little bit wider. It's up to you, whatever your base of support is. 
but the hips are going to stay over those knees as you walk your arms out. And again, at like a wider base of support, this is going to be kinder on the shoulders, so you're not pinching anything. Start to walk your arms out, maybe the middle finger angled towards that corner of the mat. And then start to release the chest down. So the chest releases, the chin can release, maybe the forehead. Breathing here. See if you can come into a full breath. In that puppy pose. One more breath. Using core strength, begin to glide out. Coming into Sphinx pose. So a nice heart opening here. I'm going to angle back just so you can see me still on camera. Elbows below the shoulders. Forearms parallel to one another. Chest is open. And I'm actively releasing my tailbone towards my heels. I'm active through my legs. So pointing through the toes. Nice opportunity to lengthen the spine and open your chest. Breathe. So notice your breath here. And then start to connect to the breath. Inhale. And as you exhale, bring the gaze over that left shoulder, drawing the left hip down towards the left heel. And then inhale back through center, and then exhale, go the other way. Inhale through center, exhale, gazing over the left shoulder. Inhale through center, one more time on that right side. Inhale through center. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you lift the elbows, lengthen the arms to any amount, any degree. Make sure there's no pinching in the low back, but you're actually lifting and lengthening the spine out of the hips. One more inhalation. And as you exhale and lower down, elbows bend to the sides. You can create that pillow for either cheek and just wiggle the hips gently from side to side. One more breath. Finding a neutral neck, finding your cobra. Inhale, elbows hug into the midline. As you exhale, curl toes under, maybe through the knees. You can float up, coming into your down dog. Feel free to pedal out the feet. You can walk your dog. You can bend one knee, then the other. Just finding what works for you in your down dog, just exploring for these next several breaths. This helps with posture, this inversion, our uttanasana, our down dogs, any inversion. Again, all of that weight that we usually have sitting on the lumbar spine from sitting all the time, we reverse that. So really powerfully healthy for our bodies. Notice your breath here. Just one more breath. And then slowly with control, you can release your knees to the earth once again. Inner big toes touch, rounding the spine, pressing the mat away, coming back into your down dog. deep breath. Drawing the palms under the shoulders back to your tabletop. So keeping that left palm grounded, reach the right fingers towards that left corner of the mat. Inhale. And as you exhale and sink back, keeping the fingertips grounded on the mat, use that sticky mat quality. Left forearm to the earth, forehead to the forearm. I'm actively reaching my right arm out. I'm actively reaching my right hip back, creating that beautiful space on that right side body. So see if you can't achieve that as well. You can tempt the fingers. You can even come off of the mat. Maybe creating more of that 
opening into that right side. Just a couple more breaths here. One more breath. And take your time. Move mindfully. That right palm under the right shoulder, back to a tabletop. Inhale, lift the gaze. Lift the tailbone. Think about lengthening the spine. Exhale, rounding. Pressing into fingertips, pressing into knuckles. Back through your tabletop. The right palm grounds and the left fingers reach. Inhale. Exhale to sink back. Resting the forehead on the forearm. few breaths here on your own, exploring that opening on the left side body. Notice where you feel this. Release tension in the face, in the jaw. One more breath. Again, the left palm under the left shoulder. Inhale, lift the gaze, lift the tailbone. Keep the tailbone lifted, curl toes under, lift hips up and back into your down dog. And inhale, floating forward to plank, the top of a push-up. And exhale, pressing the mat away, back to down dog. Inhale, lengthen, flowing through your vinyasa. You can lower knees to the earth, chaturanga down. Inhale, cobra. Strengthening back body and exhale again. You can flow through the knees or not. We're back in our down dog. So a couple more times like that. Connect to the breath. You can always rest in child's pose. We're just creating a little bit of heat. You can always come into your up dog. I like the cobras to start. It tones the back body. Really healthy for the spine. Everyone wants to always fly up into those up dogs, but Again, if we've been sitting too much, the spine could use some love. And then this last one, pressing the mat away with strength and control. You're back in your child's pose. You can make fists with your hands. And just roll at your wrists. You can even come into reverse prayer, bringing the backs of the hands together. One more breath. Begin to press the palms into the earth. Come through seated on shins just for a moment. Go ahead and find your blocks. I'm just going to shift. I think the mat is set up a little bit better. I'm shifting my orientation. We're going to come into some standing poses, and it's nice to have the blocks at the top of the mat. So you can have those at the higher height at the top of the mat. So we're going to come back into our down dog, pressing the mat away, finding that length in the spine. Neck is neutral, very unlike mine because I'm talking to you. So you can lift through the right leg, keep the hips parallel to the earth, and then exhale, release that back down. Let the heels release, press the mat away, inhale the left leg, and exhale, release, releasing the hip. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, release. Let the heels release. Press the mat away. One more time, lifting through that left heel. Keep it lifted. Engage core. Shift forward. Bend the knee. Hollow out the belly. And then plant the foot. Even if you have to physically move the foot forward. And then go ahead and find your two blocks. We're coming into a low lunge. So what can happen is that the hip that right hip can draw back. We want it forward. So draw the left hip back in space. 
Give yourself a little bit of room. We're not on a balance beam, so there's some space between the hips. The knee at about 90 degrees, and hopefully getting a nice stretch in that psoas, that hip flexor here on that right side. You can play with this. You can shift forward and back. You can bend that right knee, lengthen the right leg. I can draw that heel back a little, maybe lengthen through that front knee. That feels good, more of a pyramid pose, but we can play a little bit. All right, so coming back into that lunge. Breathing here, really think about opening up in that hip flexor, that psoas. And then bring both blocks to the inside of that front foot, walk the left foot out a little bit, and then do release that knee down to the earth. Coming into a version of lizard lunge. If you need a blanket or some cushion under that right knee, by all means. You don't have to have blocks. You can use a book. You can use a chair for this. You can use a pillow for this. We're breathing here. We don't have to go to our absolute edge. We're just opening the body. We're thinking about all the actions that we do each day, maybe trying to counter those, balance those out. It's all about that balance. Take a deep breath here. And then find stability, hands on the blocks once again. Curl the back toes under, lift the back knee, and walk through center. So maybe if that blanket's in your way, you can just move up off to the side. Make sure the feet are symmetrical. Sometimes I like to use the back of the mat as a good measuring tape, a good mindful reminder where my feet are in space. You can release the blocks down. Maybe you don't need the blocks at all. I like to usually incrementally release down. The body opens over time. One more breath. Bring hands to the blocks, bring the blocks back to the higher height. And then we're just gonna move over to the other side, finding the lunge on the other side, creating that 90 degree angle with the right knee bent, the width between the feet. I'm on the ball mound of my left foot, wiggling toes back. I'm strong here in my body, but I can release some of the weight into the blocks. And again, maybe exploring a little, rocking back and forth, toning my core. Maybe lengthen a little through that front leg, round the back heel. That left calf is super tight. I've been trying to get out and walk every day. So think about toning in the glutes. And the front of the body relax when the back body is engaged without tension. Just another breath here. And both blocks to the inside of that front foot. Again, if you like that blanket underneath you, why not? Protect the joints. Think about a lifelong practice. You can untuck the toes. You can walk that right foot out. You can stay here on the top of the blocks and really engage the back body, open the front body. So right here, I'm getting a beautiful stretch just with that engagement. I'm tilting my pelvis forward. Maybe over time, then I can release down Forearms can come to the blocks, or again, a chair. We don't need, again, to come to that absolute edge of the stretch. We want the nervous system to be healed as well. And if there's tension, there's fighting happening in the body, maybe the mind is trying to overcome the body, the body's saying, not yet, not yet, the nervous system becomes unbalanced. And we want even more healing in that area particularly in this, this time of our, our national and international crisis. So our practice can be so mindful and so healing if we allow it. Finding that peace within, one more breath. Always mindful, take your time in the transitions out. 
Palms can come to the blocks at higher height. Curl the back toes under. Prepare to lift through the knee. And then again, mindful, slow, incremental, walking the blocks back through center. And then if possible, don't use the blocks. Just set those off to the side. We're going to do some nice side body stretches here. So feet are in symmetry. Nice toned core, strong legs. My feet aren't as wide as they could be. So angle them in just a little bit. You can start to walk hands, heart, and torso over towards the left foot. My left, your right. I'll just mirror you. So call this your right foot, sorry. Go over to the right foot. So you want to ground the right palm to the inside of the foot or angle on fingers. And see if you can reach the outer ankle, the outer, maybe heel, maybe the outer edge of the foot. Keep the neck neutral. And breathe. start to bend through the left knee. Beautiful side body stretch. Feel that. I feel that in my outer body. Maybe even in the ribs a little. One more breath. And release. And walk the hands back through center. You can give a little bit of rounding here. Working out any kinks. A little cat cow. A little wiggle of the hips. And then over to that other side. So that left palm grounds, the right arm reaches. See what you can take hold of comfortably and relax the neck. Coming into those deep, full breaths here and start to maybe bend through the right knee. And that right arm Creates a nice cradle for my head to rest in. One more breath. And release. Come back to your center. Pause here. You can shake the head yes. No. Really using the weight of that attraction and open the spine. One more breath. Starting to bend your knees. Starting to walk hands, heart and torso towards that right foot. You can frame through the foot, sweeping the leg back. Plank. You can vinyasa or just down dog. Down dog or child's pose, five breaths. Releasing knees to the earth if you're not there already. Go ahead and find a couple props. So you can sit on your block. You can also just sit on a chair and then find a strap or a scarf like I've got. I like to sit in hero's pose. It's not essential, but it's possible. Um, so you can sit up, take the fingers angling into the midline of the body. Find your calf muscles and move those out of the way, off to the side as you sit back down. That way, the strong musculature isn't in your way as you find your seat. And then find your strap. You're just going to drape that over the left shoulder. It's hard to mirror and then not mirror, but I'll try to mirror. Left shoulder. <laughs> so sweeping that left arm up, palm faces the wall behind you, bend the elbow, pat yourself on the back, keeping the tricep facing forward. You can even assist with that right arm, elbow up. Trying to keep awareness of the torso. So think about your mountain pose energy here. 
We're just stretching that tricep group. Stay here. Find your strap with the left hand. Extend the right arm out, thumb down, bend the elbow, find the other end of the strap. Walk the hands closer together and breathe. Relax any tension, maybe close the eyes. One more breath. Extend the fingers, open the palms, and then open the arms. Let them come parallel to the earth, squeezing shoulders along the spine and the back body, and then relax arms down. Going to roll through wrists. Going to roll through shoulders. Just taking time to notice the body. Notice what's open, notice if there's anything crunchy going on. Pause between the sides, reach fingers down, lift the gaze up. You can open and close the mouth. Releasing the gaze down. You can begin to float the arms up, interlace the fingers, bring the hands to rest more towards the back of the head. Breathe. Stay here or draw the elbows closer together. Continue to breathe. One more deep breath. Fingers release, arms float down, keep the head bowed. And then slowly roll the left ear towards the left shoulder, reach the right fingers down. Relax the jaw, maybe rock the head back slightly. Back through center, and then right ear towards the right shoulder, reaching the left fingers down. Relax the jaw, maybe rocking the head back. Breathing here. One more breath. Didn't realize how much I needed this till I did it. Bow the head heavy, round the spine intentionally. And then grow the spine tall. Roll through shoulders up, back and down. And then we'll simply move the strap over to the right shoulder. Right arm floats up, palm faces the wall behind you, bend the elbow, pat yourself on the back. Left hand comes in to assist with that stretch. I'm trying to be mindful of my body. I'm not trying to overcompensate by sticking the chest out. Think about drawing the ribs in towards the spine. Breathing. Right hand finds the strap. Left arm to the side, thumb down, bend the elbow, find the other end of the strap. You might notice a difference between your sides, maybe one side more tight. Less open. Again, you can close the eyes or soften your gaze. And release any unnecessary gripping. Notice the hands. Just a light pressure, just enough to hold the strap. Can you breathe fully here? One more breath. And releasing. Fingers opening, extending. Arms extending to the side, squeezing shoulder blades along the spine and the back body. Open the heart, inhale. And then exhale, float the arms back down. Again, anything that feels good here. Rolling through shoulders, rolling the head from side to side. Back 
the center. And move the strap off to the side. And shifting off the block, making your way through seated. So from seated, legs can extend. That should feel good, like energy releasing towards the heels. You can pump the backs of the legs into the earth, maybe rocking legs a little back and forth. You can flex and point through feet. Feel life returning to the toes. <laughs> little snap, crackle, pop in the ankles. A moment to spread through the toes. Relaxing toes. Zip the inner legs together. Be strong here. I like to point my toes. My inner legs very strong. Fingertips either between halfway between the knees and the hips or at the knees or beyond. You're, you'll see what you need. Draw the low belly in and up. Inner legs zip together. See if you can pulse the legs away from the earth together. We're going to do 10 of those. So find what you need. It's more accessible with the hands closer. Just make sure you're not rocking back. You want to be as far forward as you can. Think about compression. So we want the legs, the shins to be compressed against the body, the torso, the front. So we're going to do this 10 times. Ready? So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hinging forward. Back body, one more breath. Using that same core strength to grow the spine tall. Roll your shoulders up, back and down. Palms press alongside the hips. Open the chest, lifting the gaze. Find length from the tailbone through the crown of the head without straining the neck. There's no need to really drop the head back. Just breathe here. One more breath. Shifting forward. See if you can walk the fingers a little further down, maybe to the knees or beyond. Core is active, inner legs zip together. We're going to pulse 10 times again. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Relax and fold. See if you can't get a little bit more folded forward. Pashi Murotanasana. Make sure there's no strain or tension in the low back or really anywhere in the body. One more breath. Again, grow the spine tall. Roll your shoulders up, back and down. And as you plant the puzzle inside the hips, see if you can't make a triangle back behind. So my pointer finger and my thumb are meeting. My fingers are touching my glutes, pressing into the earth. Lengthen this through the arms. Whew, that's a good stretch. Through the shoulders into the biceps. And I'm still thinking about lengthening in my spine and breathing. Again, protect your body. You might not touch. Maybe the hands walk out a little bit. That's okay, too. One more breath here. Again, shifting forward, we're going to come into that core strength one more time. Maybe the fingers reach even further forward. Core is active. Hollow out the belly. Think about chair pose, that fierce pose where you kind of have that hollowness. Inner legs zip together. We're going to pulse 10 times. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and hinge. See how much deeper your Pashimottanasana is? I'm really pretty tight in my body. Stay folded forward here. Think about lengthening the spine out of the hips. Core is still very active. Inner legs can be active. The backs of the legs active. I'm sorry, the front of the legs active. So the backs of the legs can relax. The quads turned on, hamstrings off. One more breath. Using all that core strength to grow the spine tall. Rolling through your shoulders, up, back, and down. Plant the palms. You can stay here or lifting through the hips. See if you can ground the toes and coming into a reverse plank. One more breath. And 
releasing back down. Beautiful. And for a moment, just bringing the soles of the feet together, knees out to the sides. Cobbler's pose, hands can come to the feet, maybe to the ankles, maybe to the shins, finding a tall spine. Knees release towards the earth. Breathe deeply here. Start to walk the feet out a few inches so you've got a bigger diamond shape in your body. See if you can't slip the forearms underneath your shins. And see if you can't take hold of the feet and bow it forward. One more breath. Release one arm, release the other. Making sure that you've got plenty of room back behind you. Props out of the way. But you can have your props uh, around you for Shavasana, so you're just not struggling to find them as we come closer to Shavasana. We're not there yet. So you can use core strength, you can find that Power mudra, point the pointer finger and the thumb, interlace the last three fingers and roll down all that core engagement onto your back. Moment to stretch out long. Arms overhead, lengthen through legs. Breathe. And then arms float down, bending one knee, then the other. Pressing the soles of the feet into the earth, heels in line with knees, knees in line with hips, tuck the tailbone and inhale, lift the hips up, and then exhale, lower down, one vertebra at a time, tailbone meets the mat last. Inhale, roll it up, and exhale, releasing back down. So do this a couple times. Follow your breath. Each time, maybe a bit more length in the spine, a bit more lift. And I like to use a strap. We're gonna come into the fullness of this pose. So an invitation to have a strap by you. If your shoulders are super tight like mine, making sure you know where the strap is. Don't turn your head in the pose. Inhale, lift the hips up. You can take the strap underneath you. Strap end in each hand. Tuck the shoulders under the back body. Lift the hips. Breathe. One more breath. Release the strap, untuck the shoulder, slowly release down. Again, the tailbone meets the mat very last. You can pause here, you can hug knees into the chest, or we'll rock from side to side. Coming into your version of your twist, arms can extend out, releasing the legs, the knees over to the right side, maybe the gaze over the left shoulder. Beginning to settle, beginning to soften. You can close the eyes or soften the gaze. One more breath. You can float one knee, then the other. Hug them into the chest, it'll rock from side to side. I need to move over, this couch is in my way. Arms extend out, and then release the knees over to the left, maybe the gaze to the right. One more breath. Neck neutral, gaze skyward, floating one knee, then the other, back up. You can hug knees into the chest, rock back and forth, maybe coming into happy baby if that's available to you, bending the knees deeply, reaching for the pinky toe edges of the feet with the feet skyward. 
any final movements that you need before our final resting pose, Shavasana. Now begin to make your way there. Never short changing yourself. This is the most important pose. So we can integrate all the energy that's been released into the body, legs long, feet wide. Feel spacious in your body, feel complete in your practice. Maybe you want a blanket on top of you, maybe a bolster under the knees, an eye pillow. Find alignment in the spine, length from the tailbone through the crown. Surrendering the body to the earth. As you simply rest here. to deepen your breath. If you need to continue to rest in Shavasana, take that time. Allow that to happen. I know a lot of us aren't sleeping as well as we should be or could be. And then we can continue to wake up, moving fingers, moving toes, bringing life back to the body, to our movement and ankles, wrists. You can open and close the mouth. Stretching arms overhead. Yawning, breathing. Bending one knee, bend the other. Staying mindful as you roll gently to either side, curling into a fetal position, resting your head on your arm. Belly soft, knees bent. Take something with you from this practice into your day. It's a reminder to be present, using this gift of time, slow down time, to be present in your life. And with closed eyes or soft gaze, take your time using arm strength, pressing up to seated, maybe with a rounded spine, a heavy head, Rooting down into the sit bones, and growing the spine tall from there. Open your heart as you bring hands to your heart, palms together, Anjali Mudra, a seal of offering. Acknowledge this offering to yourself. And I am grateful for the honor to lead and guide you through this healing practice. Namaste. Thank you.